What are the top five illegal things I did in China? China is a place of laws. Laws that are very seldom enforced, to be fair. Of course, we all know, don't mess with drugs in China. That can actually get you the death penalty. Don't talk out against the government or officials or people in power or even people with a lot of influence because that can get you disappeared, jailed, you, know, you name it. There's all sorts of things that can happen to you. But when it comes to everyday life, you'll find that you might be breaking a lot of laws in China without knowing it. And that's simply because there's a lack of knowledge and an ignorance about the laws, especially on the part of foreigners who come to China. Because let's face it, massive language barrier, and there are no notifications posted around the place telling you what's legal and what's not. Well, not in English anyway. And most foreigners, let's face it, that live in China, they can't read Chinese. So let's get into the first illegal thing I did in China. And I did this often. And that is visiting friends. Believe it or not, if you are a foreigner and you are staying with a friend overnight, so for instance, I used to every week go up to Huizhou to stay at Sea Milk's place, you know, when we had our motorcycle shop, and I'd stay over a night or two. If you're going to stay over in someone's house, you must, well, in fact, the host must report to the local police station and fill out a temporary residence form on your behalf, or you must do it yourself. Whenever you check into a hotel in China, they do this for you. When you rent in China, you must, by law, go and register yourself with the local police station. But visiting a friend and staying overnight somewhere requires you to do the same thing. Of course, it's ridiculous. Nobody does this. But you are breaking the law if you are not going to the local police station and telling them that you're staying there, even if it's just for the night. I once even broke the law just visiting a friend for dinner. And that's because he was a government worker. In fact, he was somebody who worked at the customs and border sort of area of Shenzhen. And he lived in a compound that was for government workers. And foreigners are not allowed to enter the compounds where government people live. Luckily, he had enough influence to let me in. And he even allowed me to ride his police motorbike up and down the border of Shenzhen and Hong Kong. Speaking of motorcycles, the second thing that I did in China that was illegal, and I did this a lot, was riding a fully licensed, registered, and insured motorcycle. Now this might sound very strange, but China has a very weird relationship with motorcycles, and many towns and cities have outright banned motorcycles from entering them. Now, there's no very convenient way for you to find out which towns and cities have banned motorcycles, and these laws change quite often. So, I would be on a motorcycle adventure and ride into a town or a city not knowing that motorcycles were banned, and thus break the law. This has resulted in me having brushes with the police, where they've come up and grabbed the keys out of my ignition and tried to impound my motorcycle, and I've had to try my best to talk my way out of it, pay a fine, things like that, just to be able to move on. But it's very frustrating because, for instance, there was a small town in Guangdong I would ride through all the time on my motorcycle adventures. And then just one week they decided to change the laws and I rode through and they stopped me. So, yes, I broke the law a lot on my motorcycle, even though it was fully legal and registered and insured. Now, the third illegal thing that I did, which is very illegal in China, was watching Pornhub. Yes, unfortunately, I am a man. I'm not going to lie. Although everybody pretends they don't watch porn. You know, come on, guys. We all know that every once in a while, a man kind of takes a look at porn. Now, whether you're very much into it or not, or you just give it a little glance, like I perhaps did once or twice living in China, you are breaking the law. Pornography, consumption of pornography, is completely illegal in China. Never mind making or distributing pornography, that's even worse. If you're one of those guys or girls who perhaps likes to maybe film you and your partner doing something naughty, 
don't do that in China. If that footage is ever found, you can be busted for manufacturing pornography. And I tell you what, it's got some pretty harsh sentences. The fourth illegal thing that I did was to see a doctor without getting a ticket first. Of course, this is really kind of me being a little silly here. My wife is a doctor and I would go into her office to visit her sometimes in the clinic. But in China, you have to line up, get a ticket, first pay before you're allowed to go and see a doctor. It's actually quite a horrible system and it has led to some very bad situations like scalpers lining up to get tickets in order to sell them at a higher price to people who need urgent care. Now you may not believe me, but you cannot see a doctor until you've paid for your consultation. That means lining up in these massive queues when you've got a huge fever and are about to pass out, or even worse. It's really not a very good system, and anyone who's ever visited a hospital in China will know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, and yes, nothing is free when it comes to healthcare in China, so even though they claim to be communist or socialist or whatever it is, it's uh, still very expensive. Depending. You know, basic medicines and things like that are very cheap, but if you have to have an operation, or if you've broken your leg or something like that, be prepared to spend a huge chunk of money. Now, the fifth illegal thing that I did a lot in China was stay in hotels. Okay, this really ticks me off. But when you travel outside of the big cities in China, many hotels will not allow foreigners to stay in them. You see, hotels need a special kind of a license in order to let foreigners stay in them. And there's a lot of procedures and systems that have to be set up in place in order for a foreigner to be able to stay in a hotel. I know this sounds outlandish to a lot of people because could you ever imagine a Chinese person traveling abroad to say Australia or America, something like that, walking into a Holiday Inn or any, any hotel, trying to book in and they're like, Sorry, Chinese people are not allowed to stay here. Well, this happens a lot in China. You walk into these smaller hotels when you get out of the bigger cities, and very often they'll tell you to your face, sorry, foreigners can't stay here, or we cannot help you because you're a foreigner. All right, so we rode quite far and we're running out of time and we tried to stay in a little village, uh, sorry, a town called Jingzhou, and uh, it's got a railway station and everything. But because this is a minority area, some Dong minority or something, they are not allowing foreigners to stay in this town. This happens if you go into minority areas. Uh, quite often the police forbid foreigners to stay in those specific areas. So we tried everything, we can't stay here, we're gonna have to push on to, unfortunately, like go much longer than we wanted to. Go to some piece of crap town called Huai Huan or something. Um, and unfortunately that's what we're gonna have to do so we're gonna hit the road and continue on about another 150 k's now apparently in 2006 the government said that that's not okay and we're going to start letting foreigners stay in every hotel but guess what just because the government says something doesn't mean that it gets done in china you would think a big top-down heavy authoritarian government like in china when they snap their fingers things get done but that's not how it works because it has to filter down to the provincial level and the smaller levels and the town and the city and the whatever it is the neighborhood and they just don't want to implement it you have to understand it's a pain in the ass it's a hassle for them to have to fill out the extra paperwork if a foreigner comes to stay the computer systems they have to uh, register whoever's in there well it's not set up to take foreign passport numbers and things like that they have to get the local police to come in to do that temporary residence thing i told you right in the beginning of this video and yes hotels that do allow foreigners to stay in them i've been there when the police come in to check a policeman will come in or multiple will come into the hotel and they will actually look through all the photocopies of the passports because when you check in they photocopy your passport and depending on the city or area they will also demand to copy your entry stamp and your visa page things like that and by law they must notify the police if your visa is out of date 
or anything like that. This of course is hair pullingly frustrating, especially when you understand the law and can speak Chinese like I do. When you get to these smaller towns, you argue with them, tell them that they're not legally allowed to kick you out and that you should be able to stay. They just won't budge. And this happened to me as recently as 2019. This has in the past led to some very dangerous situations for me. I'll give you one example. When I was riding with some friends through Hunan, and we tried to stop in a fairly mid-sized city. It wasn't small by any stretch of the imagination. And we actually went near one of the big train stations where they had a so-called business hotel. It even had business hotel written in English. You know, that was the name of the place. When we tried to check in, they came up with the usual thing that, sorry, you know, we can't let foreigners stay here. They pointed us to another hotel in the town that supposedly allows foreigners to stay. So we went to this other hotel and they too said, sorry, Foreigners aren't allowed to stay here. So we kicked up a little bit of a fuss and they called in the local police chief guy who came to speak to us and he also told us, sorry, foreigners aren't allowed to stay here. Move on. So that's what we did. But you have to understand, this was at the end of about an 11 or 12 hour riding day. We were all exhausted to the point where it was dangerous to ride. But we had no choice. We had no place to stay unless we wanted to sleep on the side of the road and it was freezing cold and wet and raining and so on. So we pressed on and we had to ride for about another four hours in the night in the pitch black on very bad roads to find another town. And guess what? We got to the next town and it was the exact same thing. None of the hotels would allow foreigners to stay. Now by this point we were desperate. We knew that we couldn't get out there and ride anymore. We were basically falling asleep as we were riding and it was dangerous the roads and the conditions were terrible. So we resorted to a little bit of a trick. One of the guys who was riding with us was half Malaysian, so he could pass off as a very tanned Chinese person. We sent him in and asked him to book the room for us. Of course he had a foreign passport since he was Australian and they wouldn't accept a foreign passport. But we made him lie about it and say that he'd left his ID card somewhere else and he had to use this passport because he had dual nationality. They couldn't put it into the system, however, because it kept rejecting the passport number. So he told them that there was a problem with the system and that in the morning he would be able to get someone to send his ID card and they could straighten it out in the morning. Of course, this wasn't the case, but we were desperate. We all snuck into the room one by one when the receptionist wasn't paying attention, wearing our helmets in case anyone saw us. And we kept our heads down and slept through the night. In the morning, we left very early before anyone was awake. And of course, I guess I could add to the list probably the biggest, most illegal thing I did in China, which was to operate a YouTube channel. I mean, it's pretty clear that the Chinese government does not want YouTube to be viewed. It's blocked and banned in China. They have very strict journalism laws. And even though I didn't go out to be a journalist, you could very, very well classify what I was doing as some kind of journalism, since I was walking around talking about what was happening in China all the time, showing the street scenes, all that kind of thing. You know, that's probably the biggest one that they could have nailed me on if they chose to. Luckily, I didn't talk about anything really sensitive until I left. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this little look into what's actually illegal in China. It's things that you wouldn't expect. Of course, I did get up to a whole lot of hijinks in China and more of it's going to come out as I continue to make my videos. Can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you very much to every single person who supports me here by watching my videos and sharing them out. Can't wait to see you in the next one. And until then, you know the drill as always. Stay awesome.